Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun of Shemesh until it goes down, his name is an excellent name. It is the sweetest of flagrance of flavor in the mouth, the feth of Yisrael. And so when we call on that name, Yoshua, Yoshua, Yoshua. Yoshua is his name, precious is that name, that should be the constants of our loins, instead of the crop, vile things that spew from our mouths, that produce death, separation, annihilation, and cause the earth, the great wrath of Yah, to rise upon an indignant people that have no constitution of righteousness. I know everything that I think is right. It is nida. It is a filthy keli. My mind is dressed with the filthy bloody rag that has no significance of importance. And so this mind must be trained in the Hebraic spiritual aptitude attitudes of almighty young you will never understand that outside of the parameter of the great Ahava, the love yoshua hamashiach and when he is not real in us when he is just some kind of sensation that we express some emotion when he is not real when something is real when it has a reality, it brings life. It brings the high. It is the supplier of life. It is like a man that longed for his long lost wife or son. And the expectation, the tikva of that keeps one alive. It is the Ima that waits diligently upon Yah and she rests in the confidence of Torah that she prepares her mind that her substance may be abundant when the one approach and cry out unto her that this shall be my issue this shall be the woman of my bosom the woman that brings life and strength that is valuable and important to Yisrael what are my steps in the Torah yeah. Teach me, guide me every day. Sin, your rock upon me, I pray. Teach me, oh yeah, to do right. Come on, my Zakin. We greet you all again. We present unto you our precious Zachin Yaramayan. He will teach us the excellence of Yah's Torah, His truth. We pray that Yah grant unto you all a great riches of blessings today. He will teach us with wisdom. Boy, that's a hard, strong back there. That's a thick back. Yabrak Yisrael. Hallelujah and Shabbat Shalom to Kol Yisrael Yah on this beautiful Shabbat day. You know, I was somewhat comfortable right there where I was at. Then I had to get up today enjoying that, Yisrael Yah. But there's a, there's a word that we mentioned just a few times, which is somewhat the crutch of my message today. It is the countenance. I'm going to continue on what I started Shabbat before last concerning the change, Yisrael Yah. We need to have a change of countenance. Because in our facial expressions, we reveal what's actually within the heart, what's in the mind, and what's in the nephesh of man. We need to change the countenance in here today. That those of you specifically is right, y'all need to change your countenance right now. It's not of Yah. It's not of Yah. Looking like a, a shard them out of, out of the pit, out of hell. It should not be Israel, y'all. We need to change in this hour. You need a change of heart. You need a change of left. Yeah. We have men that get up here in this rostrum, and they pour out their love amongst the house of Yisrael. 
and yet there's no change. Your countenance is somewhat fierce, but Yahweh has given us a countenance that is fierce. Our faces are harder, Israel. Yah. It's time for a change. We need to change this right here. Hallelujah. Before Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh for his mercy, for his Ahava that he has placed before us this day, Israel. Yah. He truly has shined. He has sent his Torah, as I had spoken last night, not to heal us slightly, but to make us whole, complete. He has not placed men here to lead you astray, Israel. They tell you that everything's all right. Shalom where there's no shalom. We're going to tell you the truth. Why? That you be destroyed? No, that you be made whole. That we will be complete in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Todiyah. Hallelujah. I want to begin here concerning Belshazzar, which is Daniel, as he spoke to this king, Ebuchadnezzar, concerning the vision that he had. It troubled him. About the kingdom, we know that at this time, Israel, the nation was in captivity. So, in his own strength, and in his own belief, he believed by his power, it was by his intelligence, it was by his armies and by his might that he was able to lead and obtain the riches of his kingdom, his possession, Israel. We should not be of this spirit of this Nebuchadnezzar. Really, physically, we look at it, we don't have anything of great wealth and great riches, but we hold our sins. We hold our iniquity. We hold our family members, those that walk contrary to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and higher esteem than the Mishra and the Torah of Yahweh. We count them as great riches. We don't want to let go of them. We don't want to let go of our deeds and our actions. We hold on to them. Even our very countenance on our faces, our hard countenance, our hard hearts, Yisrael Yah. Those are our great riches. Why? Because we deem them, it's hard for us to lay them down and to get rid of them, Yisrael Yah. But Yahweh, he has a way that he shall take care of that, Yisrael Yah. Do we think we're going to transgress the Torah of Yahweh and continue? No, it's not going to be, Yisrael Yah. It is not going to be. Hallelujah. I do want to start here in Daniel chapter 4, verse 29. This is concerning Athel Belshazzar of Daniel spoke concerning the vision that this king had, the falling of the nation. The power that he believed that he possessed slipping out of his grasp. What was the purpose of this? That he may know that Yahweh is in control of all things. And it's Yahweh that set men in high esteem. And it's Yahweh that gives men power to rule. And it's Yahweh that has given us the riches and what we possess, Yisrael. It's not of our own strength. So what happened in this process? Well, this vision that he had, it came to pass. He lost his kingdom. He was led into this field or this place amongst the beasts. And he became as one of them. Do we walk in this same beast nature, Yisrael? It said that his hair, it grew long as it resembles the feathers of an eagle. His nails grew as claws of a beast. And I will get to that. There was one state that he met that changed everything, Yisrael. Once he realized and give, gave Todah unto Almighty Yahweh. You see, even in this life, Yisrael, we find a change. Or we should find this change from this beast nature. That we should walk in the Torah and in the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. And until we realize that he is in control of all things, 
We're not in control of anything, Israel. We're not in control of our own lives. We have been paid and been bought with the price, and that price of Yahshua HaMashiach. So we're no longer our own. So we might as well get out of this mindset that, that I'm going to leave this. This is what I'm going to do. This is my desire. This is my will. This is my passion. I have the power. No, you do not. Yahweh, he has the power. Hallelujah. We are his possession, Israel. And we will be nothing without him. Let me begin reading here. Daniel chapter 4. I said verse 29, but let's, let's start here. Right here, verse 30. And the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a house of the kingdom? He said, And not this great nation that I have labored to build with my power and my strength. It is not great Babylon. He says, by the might of my power. He said, it was by my power. It was by my strength. It was by my understanding, by my wisdom that this great nation has been built. And for the honor, he says, of my majesty, have not I established it? Has not it been named by me, Nebuchadnezzar? And it says this, and this is the prophecy or the dream that he had at Daniel was able to show unto him. Yeah. After he has said this, after he has spoken this, this reveling, this uplifting of his own self, this bragging of his own might, his own power, it says in verse 33 that at the same hour was the thing fulfilled, this vision, upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men, from the presence of men, and did eat grass as the ox, and his body was wet also with the dew of the Shemayim. It was Yahweh that drove him out. Why? Because of his boasting, because of his bragging, that it was by his power and his might that this kingdom was established and by his hand. No, it was established from Almighty Yahweh. It was given into his hands by Almighty Yahweh. Not by his own might, not by his own power, Yisrael. Yeah. And it says here that his, the, from his back was wet with the dew from the Shemayims, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers. Can you imagine that? A grotesque sight. This is what we look like before the presence of Almighty Yahweh with what we believe is great riches and great wealth, Yisrael. Yeah. We have nothing. It's only because of Yahshua HaMashiach and because he has walked in the path that Yahweh has established, that we are even able to come boldly before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We are nothing without here. We're nothing as a people. And yet we are before Yahweh just as King Nebuchadnezzar, as this beast of the field. Why? Because we exhort ourselves. We lift our minds above the mind Yahshua HaMashiach. And we believe that we have obtained something of such great value and such wealth. Hallelujah. Let us read on here. It said, until his hairs were grown down like eagle's feathers, and his nails were like the claws of a bird. Verse 23, verse 34. And at the end of the days, it says here, at this time that was appointed that Nebuchadnezzar, should be in this position or in this place. It says that he lifted up. He said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, yes. I lifted up mine eyes unto the Shemayim. His chains did not come until he lifted up his eyes, Israel. Oh, our chains will not come until we lift up our eyes. Yeah. Until we lift up and look towards the hill from which our help and our wealth cometh from. Yeah. It's nothing that we have established. It's not by our own power that we're here today. But it's by the will and by the power of Almighty Yahweh. It's by his tough pleasure, Yisrael. And until we move from this place of walking in the will of this flesh, this beast nature, this grotesque mindset before the presence of Yahweh, until we will look up, Yisrael, we will not experience the change. We will not see this light, Yahshua HaMashiach, being shined down upon us. 
We will not receive of the knowledge and of the understanding that we should have as a nation before Almighty Yahweh. It's time for us to look up, Israel. It's time for us to change our countenance before Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. The world has taught us how to dress. They have taught us how to fix ourselves up. Men and women, with this makeup, with lipstick, it's not of Almighty Yahweh. You see these women, especially us of the diasporas, with these crazy colors, black lips, pitch black, purple, green. Come on, Yisrael. And, they, and the world have taught them, have taught us that that's attractive. This is not the beauty of Almighty Yahweh. It is not Yisrael. Yahweh, he desire us to be a people that are set apart, to have Tiferi, his beauty, with the essence of his countenance upon our face, Yisrael. So there must be a change. We have to make a change in these last days, Israel. We cannot be sustained by our present circumstances, Israel. Where we are this day, we must move beyond this. We must move beyond this, Israel. The women of the aspirants in the world, they paint themselves up to present a beauty that is not the beauty of Almighty Yahweh. It's not the tiferah of Almighty Yah. The countenances are perverse. Yeah. They're filthy. Yeah. Yahweh's countenance is the countenance of beauty. Yeah. It, it expresses him. It expresses the essence of his judgment. Sure. The essence of his Ahava, Yisraya. That's what our expression should be like today, Yisraya. That's what we should express. And it says here, until Nebuchadnezzar, he says, I lifted up my eyes unto the Shemayim. And it says this, and my understanding returned. My cognizance. I realized that the mind that I walked in was not the mind of the Most High. But it wasn't until he looked up, Yisrael. It says, my understanding returned unto me in verse 34. And I barak, I bless the Most High, the creator of all things. Hallelujah. When the last time we barak Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? Yeah. Did we bless him? Did we barak him when we rose up out of our beds this morning? As we prepared ourselves to enter into the congregation of Yisrael, yeah. the place where his name is written, Yisrael, yeah. did we barak him? Did we bless him? He says, I barak the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever. And ever. He says, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom, his Melku. Don't we want to enter into the kingdom of Yah? This kingdom that has not been made by man's hands. Don't you know that we have made our own kingdoms, Yisrael? And we try to rule by our own power, just as Nebuchadnezzar. We try to rule this by it, this house. Have we, we have not done a tough job of that, have we, Yisrael? Hallelujah. It takes the leading of the Ruach and the power of that which is written, the Torah, Yisrael, that we will be ruled by. Whose dominion and everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation. To generation. It shall never end, Yisrael. He realized that. He understood this. His eyes had been opened once he was able to look up from where he was upon his knees, eating in the grass. Before Almighty Yahweh, as a beast of the field. Hallelujah. Help me realize, Yah, my low estate. Without Yahshua HaMashiach, I am nothing. I'm just as the beast of the field. And at this time, this same time it says in verse 36, By reason, return unto me for the honor and the power of my kingdom. He says, my honor and brightness return unto me. And my counselors and my lords, those that I have set, they sought me. And I was established in my kingdom and excellency and majesty was added back unto me. And it says here, after Nebuchadnezzar experienced all this, 
He says, now I, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of the Shemayim, Almighty Yahweh. Do we honor the king? Do we honor Almighty Yahweh? Do we come before his presence with singing, with todah, with ahava? Or do we come before him with this distorted countenance? With our own pride. With our own honor, and I'm going to use this term with our own glory and our own splendor before the presence of Yahweh. We are nothing without Yahshua HaMashiach. And it says, all whose works are true and his ways and his judgment. And those that walk in pride, he says, he is able to bring to a base. He's able to bring them low. And it's Yahweh that gives the power unto the king. Even Barack Hussein Obama, it is Yahweh that gives him the position where he's at. Is he acting in the will or under the power of Almighty Yahweh? Sure he is. Yahweh has established him and put him where he is. And just as Yahweh put him in that place, Yahweh will bring him low. Even this nation, this nation shall be brought low, Yisrael. It's already been brought low by the power of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let us understand and realize who we are, that we are nothing without Almighty Yahweh. That we have no riches to lay claims to Yisrael, only the riches of Torah, only the riches that are in Yahshua HaMashiach. Because we find all that we need in him, Yisrael. So let us make this change. Let us change our upon name, our countenance. Hallelujah. Turn with me. To Marcus, Mark chapter 10, verse 1. This is concerning a young man, a rich man. An example of Yisrael. We believe we have so much possessions. We have so much to offer. Hallelujah. It is something how our countenance changed before the presence of Yahweh when we are instructed. When we are corrected. Don't you know it's just Yahweh setting you straight in his direct? In the direction he desires us to walk as a people and as a nation. To judge us. To purify us, Yisrael. So he's going to tell us he's not going to hold anything from us. He's not going to hold his Torah from us, Yisrael. But when he expresses his thoughts... And what we must do as a people, our countenance falls before him. We are hurt. Our feelings are hurt. Hallelujah. Marcus, Mark chapter 10, verse 17, as I begin reading. It says, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came running now and kneeled to him and asked him, Tov, Rabbi, teacher, master. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Wasn't that one of the main things when we came into this knowledge? I know I did. I spoke yeah. this. What must I do in this walk? In Yahshua HaMashiach, according to Torah, yeah. that I may be saved, Almighty Yahweh, that please you. That I may walk according to your mitzvah. That I may be a light. In this dark world, Almighty Yahweh, what must I do to, to inherit or obtain this eternal life? And Yahshua said unto him, why do you call me tough? Why do you call me tough? Do you not know that Yahshua knew what was in the heart of this young man of great possession? Don't you know Yahweh, he knows what's in our heart, Yisrael? We believe we have much, we possess much. But we have asked of Almighty Yahweh, of Yahshua HaMashiach, what must we do? Don't you know Yahweh is going to tell us what we must do? From this rostrum, he has told us what we must do, Yisrael. Yeah. He says there is none tough but one, and that is Almighty Yahweh. Verse 19. He says, you know the commandments. We know the commandments, Yisrael. We understand the 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 cutway of Almighty Yahweh, what we must do. Yeah. Right here, the ten, of, the ten Commandments. Yeah. Even the wicked, most wicked of the wicked know the Ten Commandments, Yisrael. Yeah. 
And then someone can quote them verbatim better than what, what some of us that call ourselves Yisrael. Yeah. So it's more than us just knowing the commandments, Yisrael. He says, you know the commandments. Do not commit idolatry. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. And honor your Ava and your Ema. Right. And he answered and said, Rabbi, can't you see the face of this young man? Why? Because he has done all these things. He has great riches. He has an understanding of the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. He says, all these I have observed even from a child, from my youth, as being a babe. We have heard these things, men of us, from our youth, what we should and should not do in the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. Whether it was a house that did not know Yah, or a God, or even Zakane would say a Jesus, yet there was commandments that we must follow or had to follow even as being children. He said, I have observed these from my youth. Then Yahshua, beholding him by Ahava, yeah. he said unto him, one thing you lack. This is the Ahava of Yah. He shows us what we lack. He tells us what we need as a people, Yisrael. We're going in one direction, and the Torah brings us back and says, no, that's not the right path. Shoe, turn at my reproof and at my correction. Well, I believe I should. I want to go this way. That way, it's, it's too narrow. It looks too hard. Well, we must lay down our own life, Yisrael. We must lay aside this weight of this sin that so easily beset us out of this straight and narrow path. That we can walk in the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. So out of Ahava, out of love, isn't Yah, not Yahshua HaMashiach full of Ahava of Yah, of, of love? Is it not one of the expressions of Almighty Yahweh? Yeah. Ahava? Yeah. If we have Ahava for one another, we'll tell each other the truth, Yisrael. Yeah. We see our out and a hope going astray, contrary to the Torah of Yah. Yeah. We will tell them the truth. Yeah. And vice versa. If the truth is coming to me as being an ark, should I cast down my countenance? Or should I look toward the hills from which my, what's come with my help? Should I lift up my eyes? Should I take heed what has been spoken unto me, give told out unto Yahweh, and continue in the right path? But no, what we do, we change our countenance. We get mad. We get angry. We're displeased when we are rebuked. And we are, when we are told that we have stepped out of the line, we have stepped out of the path of Almighty Yahweh. So in Ahava, Yahshua says here, one thing you lack. Did he say two things? One thing. There's one thing that we lack, Israel. There's one thing we must seek to obtain. And he tells this young man right here. He says, go your way. And he said, to sell. To sell, to give, to get rid of the weight, your riches, your avat, your ema, your brothers, your sisters, your houses, your homes, your land. We should not have anything that we should call our own, Yisrael. Collectively, it is to the house of Yisrael, whatever we have, Yisrael. But he said, you lack one thing. He said, go your way and sell whatsoever you have and give unto the poor. We should give unto the poor, Yisrael. We should give all that we have. We're no longer our own. Yahshua, he said this, what a hava. To take what you have and sell it and give unto the poor. And he says, and why did he have to back this up? He knew what he was doing. Yahshua knew, he, he wanted to comfort this young man. You that are listening to my live live stream, go and sell what you have and give unto the poor. Those things that you have in your possessions that we set above the Torah at the midst by the convey of Almighty Yahweh. And you shall have treasures in the Shemayim. We shall have treasures. Give up your life. Give up your aspirations. Yeah. I have nothing to look forward to or to ascertain unto Yisrael but the Melkut, the kingdom. Yeah. And to see the face of Almighty Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach in Shalom. That's all that I have. Yeah. 
That's all that I work for. That's all the possessions that I have, Israel. Hallelujah. And you shall have treasures in Shemayim. And he says, come with me. Come and take up this stake. Take up this burden. Take up this way of life that you may obtain. Take up the stake, and he says, to follow me. He said, go your own way. I give you a space of time to repent, to get everything right, to make it clear, to sell all that you have, to get rid of the lust of this flesh, this pride of life, what we deem is so, it's priceless, and come and follow Yahshua HaMashiach. To take up this stake, to make this change. To make this drastic change, it's a drastic change, Israel. Your family, they're going to look at you funny. Your friends, they're going to mock. Let them mock on, because why? We have great riches in the Shemayim that Yahweh has given unto um, to us. Hallelujah. He said, take up this stake and follow me. What did this young man do? What do we do, Israel? And he was sad. Sad. After hearing of the great riches of the Shemayans. This is a promise that Yahshua has spoken unto him. He was sad at that saying. We find ourselves being sad at this saying, Israel. We hear of this great wealth of knowledge and understanding as we have heard of this morning. Rebuke, chastisement, the harbor of Yahweh, how we should walk, how we should talk, how we should present ourselves, both Ak, Akim, and you a hope before the presence of Yahweh, and we cause our countenance to fall in, to be fallen before the presence of Yah. And he went away, grieved, ka'a, in pain, sorrowful, hurt to his very left. Why? Did not Yahshua offer him great riches beyond his understanding? Riches that his eyes have not beheld. Don't you know that what Yahweh have for us, Yisrael? Yah? If we will sell our lives, we will give up what we have. And just take up our stake and follow Yahshua HaMashiach. He has given us riches and great riches that we cannot even comprehend. Wisdom that we cannot even comprehend. We shall understand all things when we see him, Yisrael. Yah. And we shall be even as he is like him. Don't you want to get to that possession, that place, Yisrael? Yah? I know I do. That is my, my reward in life, Israel. It's to enter into the milk of Almighty Yahweh. Why was he hurt? Why was his pain? Why was his countenance, his ponine, fallen? Why is our countenance fallen today, Israel? Don't we hope in Yah? It's not here our hope. Should not walking in the Torah be our aspiration? What gives us strength to press on? He said he went away sorrowful and grieved. Why? For he had great possessions. He had great possessions. What possessions do we have or beyond or above the possessions of the Torah? The words of Almighty Yahweh, his promises. The Melkut. The riches he has promised and had given. He has already given them unto us, Yisrael. But we must make this change in this preparation. We must make ourselves ready. To enter into the presence of Almighty Yahweh. In verse 23, and Yahshua, he looked around and he said unto his disciples, one of his disciples that was with him, he said, How hardly shall they, they that have riches, and we have riches, we hold things dead to our hearts that we don't want to get rid of, Yisrael. Hardly would they enter into the Melkut in the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. That's a shame. Hallelujah. What do we have that is greater than the possessions of the Melkut and the, the kingdom, Yisrael? I have nothing. We should be willing to lay down our lives. We should be willing to give all to Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because he has given all for us, Yisrael. He has given us Yahshua HaMashiach. But yet we walk around with this, our countenance falling. Our face is sad. Some of us walk around with this anger, this hostility tility against the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. 
And you shall be judged. We shall be judged, Israel, Yahweh. We do not walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Again, we're continuing in this change. We must change, Israel, Yahweh. We must change our countenance. We must change our left. We must change our heart. And be given this heart of flesh. Hallelujah. Turn with me as we move on to EO. Concerning the countenance, Yisrael, Yah, the Pauline. We must change our expression. A husband don't want to come to his house after he has worked hard and labored out in the field. And his wife is presenting to him this distasteful this countenance. Yahweh, he don't want to look after all that he has given unto Yisrael, Yah. He's given us so much. Are we not as a bride? Waiting the entering of our bridegroom, Yahshua HaMashiach. Do we think he want to enter into the bayah, into the place, and see this countenance that has fallen? After his work, after he has carried his stake for us, and we present this countenance before him that is distasteful, that is displeasing Israel. It says here in Eob, For now you number my steps. Do you not watch over my sins? This is Eo, as he is speaking because of his, his, well, his experiences, Yisrael, in his body. And he says, my transgression is sealed up in a bag, and you show up my iniquity. And surely the mountain falling, fallen, it becomes to naught. And the rock is removed out of its place. We need to be removed out of our place, Israel. Yeah. We should allow the Torah of Yahweh to break down anything that is not of him, Israel. We have lifted up ourselves in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. It is not by the word, is it not by the word of Almighty Yahweh to change or that changes our countenance? It changes all things when he speaks, Israel. It says here, and the waters Wear away the stone. You wash away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth. He is speaking of Almighty Yahweh. And you destroy the hope of even man. It says in verse 20, you prevail continuously against him. And he passes away. He says, you change. His countenance and send him away. Yes. It is Yahweh that changes the countenance of one or of a man, and he sends him away. It is Yahweh that calls a man to turn and to repent. Yes. Even after, even seeing Eo, even in his great riches, in his wealth, even his fame. It was by the word of Yahweh and by his judgment that even that was wore down and washed away. It was by the judgment and the expression of Almighty Yahweh that has brought him even to this lower state. That he even understood that he was nothing, that he is nothing without Almighty Yahweh. So even that in Yahweh's judgment, it should cause our countenance to be changed, Israel. It should cause us to even open our hearts and our minds that we may understand and see what he is doing in his last and evil hours. It says in verse 21 that even a man's, his sons, they come to honor and he knows it not. And they are brought low, but even that avat he perceived it not of them. But his flesh upon him shall have pain. Is that not true, Israel? Are we not in the flesh? Do we not see, even us which are young, yes. how even the strength of our flesh evades us? The weakness of our flesh, Yisrael. And we have pains, we have hurt. Yes. You know, even working, if you're not careful doing certain things, you can hurt yourself. You can hurt this, this flesh. Yes. It is soft. It cannot endure much, Yisrael. He says that, but even the flesh of him shall have pain, and his nephesh 
with him shall more mourn. Yes, yes. Do we not have pains just right, y'all? Yes, yes. Do not we yet mourn, yes. even in our love them, even as we wait for our change to come? Yes. Eo was waiting for his change to come. Did he know that there was a change to come? Yes, he had a moon out in the change. Yes. Even all that he went through, he had Imuna for his change to come. He was just waiting. And, and even trying to be patient, waiting for his change to come. We must wait for our change to come, Israel. But even at that, it takes the Torah of Almighty Yahweh to cause us to shoot, to cause us to change, to cause us to look deep in our own selves and look deep in our lives and our hearts. To find those things that are not of Almighty Yahweh. And allow his Torah, the fire of his Torah, to cleanse us. I desire that, you, Almighty Yahweh, that you send your fire to cleanse us. That you send your messenger, your, your Malak, to rest this coal or your coal from your throne. Hallelujah. That it may purge us, that it may cleanse even our inward parts. That we may walk clean and complete. Hold before your presence, Almighty Yahweh. That's my desire today, Israel. You know, we should desire, we should want Yahweh to correct us. We should want the Torah to change us, to change our countenance, to change our heart and our left, to uplift our countenance, Israel. You know a man that is lowly? You can tell a man, even... As he tries to smile of his estate, why? Because the expression on his countenance is right, y'all. Do we not think the messengers know? Do we think Yahweh does not see the expression on our faces, Yisraya? He does, and he knows. Continuing in Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. We need to look up, Yisraya. We need to start walking around with our heads down in the dirt and look towards the hill from which our help cometh. Again, another example of a fallen countenance as we read here in Bereshith. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. It was concerning Cain and Abel. The countenance. Very important, Yisraya. Countenance is very important. Whether you're going for an interview you present yourself before one that could give you work. Yes. You can put on the most fashionable clothes. Mm -hmm. But if your countenance is not right, That's right. you're not going to get the job. Even a man that comes in may not have spent as much money on his countenance. He's clean. He's fit. But it's the countenance play an important part in that interview. A countenance play an important part, the most important part, even in the bayat before Almighty Yahweh, his presence is here, Yisrael. You can think what you want to. His judgment is in the midst. When there are two or three gathered, there he is in the midst of Yisrael. So he sees our countenance. He knows our deeds and our actions, Yisrael. And it's time for us to change. You will never get that interview or that job coming in with a countenance that is cast down, looking down at the floor. We must be erect in the presence of Yah. We must be straight. We must be assured of our foundation. And our foundation is, has been laid by Yahshua HaMashiach. We must stand on him. Not our flesh, Israel. Because our flesh continues to let us down. But Yahshua would never let us down, Israel. It says here in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 4. Verse 1, and Adam, he knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have begotten a man-child from Almighty Yahweh. And she bare again Abel, two, uh, two brothers, from the same woman, the same womb. And Abel, he was a shepherd of the sheep, yes. but Cain, he was a tiller of the ground. And we have heard this time after time concerning Cain and Abel, Yisrael. But there's one important fact I do want to point out on this day. Yet this beautiful Shabbat Yahweh has given us. Hallelujah. We're in his presence. 
whether the sun is shining as it is doing now or whether it's, it's cloudy and it's raining. Still yet, the presence of Yahweh is in the midst of his people. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth of the fruit of the ground as an offering unto Almighty Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought forth, forth the firstlings of the flock, of the fat thereof. What have we brought before the presence of Almighty Yahweh Israel? But you know, every day should be a day where we bring forth an offering yeah. unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Don't you know our, the expression of all our faces yes. is an offering before Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Don't we understand that, Yisrael? Yes. Then why are our countenance, why are our countenance fallen? Why do we look so bleak in the house in the presence of Almighty Yahweh? I will show us in the next few scriptures, Yisrael. And Yahweh, he had respect to the offering of Abel. Verse 5. But unto Cain, it says his offering, he did not have any respect. We have entered into the presence of Yahweh, and he has not received our offering. He has no respect of what we have brought before him. Why? Because it has been the workings of our own hands. It has been by the strength of our own flesh, Yisrael. And it's not acceptable before Almighty Yahweh. And it says that Cain, he was very wroth. Why are we so wroth? Why are we so angry at Almighty Yah? Don't you know all we have to do is bring that which is acceptable into his house? To enter in with Toda and with praise? Hallelujah. Before Almighty Yahweh. But we come with our mouth shut. And with our countenance fallen. It should not be in the press. It should not be in the house. We must make a change. It's time for a change, Israel. Yeah. Not tomorrow. Yeah. Not next week. But now. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Now is the acceptable time. Yeah. It's the acceptable season yes. of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Even as they will say out in the word, even as the slang term will go, like yesterday. We need to have made this change, Israel. Yeah. Yahweh, he's not going to continuously allow us this space of time. Even in Revelation, it says that those that are filthy, they should be made filthy still. They're not going to be changed. You're not going to be changed, Israel. Yeah. Oh, when Yahshua come, I, I shall make the change. On my deathbed, I shall make the change. There's one, a cousin years ago, I reproved. Because he made this statement that you don't know in my dying bed doing this that I may repent and be changed before Almighty Yahweh. I told you, you're not going to change. You're going to be worried about your, your flesh and your life. Your mind is not going to be on the things of Yah. So while Yahweh has given us this space of time, Israel, Yah, we must change. We must change our countenance. We must change this hardened heart, Yisrael, yeah, that we have. You know when a man has made a change because you will see it on his face. When there's something going on inside of here, it's going to be revealed right here. It will be known. It will be discerned. It will be seen, Yisrael. Yeah. We should not be walking after the same mind that we once had in the world. But we should be walking in the newness of life, in this mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, Seeking to please our Abba in everything and in all that we do, Yisrael. Yeah. And one of the things that please him above all things is how we enter into his presence and our countenance. Hallelujah. He said unto Cain, it said that Cain, his countenance was, or he was very wroth, and his countenance, his ponine, it fell. In verse 5. Verse 6 of Bereshith Genesis and Yahweh, he spoke unto Cain. Did it not? This reminds me even what I just spoke concerning Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. To the young man that had riches, he spoke unto him what to do. And he instructed him what to do. Don't you know that Cain understood what he should have done? But yet he brought another offering. Why? Because he wanted to prove his manlyhood and what he had done. And his labor before Almighty Yahweh. His riches. He said, this should be good enough for Yah. Yeah. 
but it was not. Yahweh is not going to accept anything of us, Yisrael, except what he has commanded us and what he has instructed us. So did Cain do it? He do not understand it. No, he understand. He understood. It was taught to him by his Abba, Adam. He instructed them. They knew to bring an offering at this time. He understood. That's why they did it at this time. That's why they was doing what they was doing, Yisrael. But the wickedness of Cain and his disobedience, he wanted to come another way. And he was just found being a thief and a robber, Yisrael. Yeah. And Yahweh said unto Cain, why are you wroth? Why are you angry? Why are you bitter? Why? Why are we angry, Yisrael? Why are we bitter? Why is our countenance falling when Yahweh instructs us and has told us what to do? Lay down your life. Set aside the sin that easily besets you. Get rid of those riches or those things that you place highly esteem above the Torah and pick up this stake and follow me. He said, why is your countenance fallen? He said, if you do well, if you do tough, if you would just do what I have instructed you to do. But we have not done what Yahweh has instructed us to do, Yisrael. That's why we come before his presence and our countenance is fallen. And we are angry, we are upset when we are instructed from the roster. When Yahweh instructs us from his Torah, when his revelation truth is being reviewed, revealed and it shows us, me, it shows you, it shows where we are and where we stand in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. And we have a long way to go, Yisrael, in very short time. So it's time for us, Yisrael, to take heed to ourselves and follow the instructions of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Why is your countenance falling, Cain? He said, if you do well, in verse 7, shall you not be received? Shall you not be accepted? If we will do well what Yahweh has instructed us, Yisrael, there is nothing that we could put our hands to that would not be received of Almighty Yahweh. Everything that we do, Yisrael, it should reflect Yah. It should be to his praise and to his honor, anything that we lay our hands to. He said, if you do well, will you not be accepted? He said, and if you do not well, if you don't do tough, if you do not what I have instructed you to do, it said because sin lies at the door. That's the answer to your problems right there. That's the answer to why we become before Almighty Yahweh with the fallen countenance. Our eyes droop and we fall asleep in his presence. It's because sin knocks at the door. It's because there is sin at the door, Yisrael. It's time for us to make a change. It's time for us to lift up our heads and our countenance before Almighty Yahweh. He said, because sin lies at the door, and, you sh and to you shall be his desire. You should do whatever the flesh wants to do. However the flesh leads. You will not be led by the Ruach and by the, 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 the counsel of Almighty Yah, but you will be led by your, your flesh, and you shall rule over him. We have done that well, have we not? True. Rule our own self. Yes. Did not King Nebuchadnezzar, did he not experience that? Yes. He ruled himself. Yes. Well, it should be by the ruling and by the Torah and by the Mishpah unto Almighty Yahweh. Okay. So let us look up, Yisrael. Yes. Let us change our countenance. Let us change our heart before the presence of Almighty Yahweh yes. that we may come before him with an offering that is acceptable. What a pleasing offer. What would that do for even your hope if we would come in the right route? Uh, I come into the presence of Almighty Yahweh, lifting up his name, and I see my ark lifting his hand, name. Would well, that give me more resolve? That give me more strength to enter into the presence of Almighty Yahweh? That's what we should do, Yisrael. That's what Yahweh wants, and that's what Yahweh expects from his house and expects from his people. Any Avaya, any Ema expects their children, their bang, to honor them. And just simply do what you are told. That's what Yahweh wants. He, he doesn't desire to, to continuously beat us and to warn us. He just simply wants us to remain and to stay in the path that he has, has instructed us to do. And if we would do that as a nation, as a people, we'd be happy in his presence. We'll be full of joy in his presence. Yeah. When we see, when the presence of Yahweh come forth just like any bang child, when he see his avah, 
or his emma, he is overfilled with joy and with understanding, Israel. Hallelujah. Yahweh is tough. Don't you barack him for his mercy, his ahasid, Israel. That he takes the time to show us what we need to do in his presence. Just as Yahshua HaMashiach instructed that young man. That young man believed he had so much to offer. He possessed so much. Yahshua said, that's trash. Get, get, get rid of that stuff. I've got something that is worth much more. I've got a stake. I've got suffering. I've got enduring for the sake of the kingdom. For the sake of the message of Yahshua HaMashiach. And if you would carry this stake, he has offered each and every one of us this stake. That he has prepared for us great wealth, riches and wealth in his Melchu and his kingdom, Israel. Hallelujah. That puts fire under my belt. I don't know about you today, Israel. Hallelujah. But that puts fire my, under my belt to endure for Yahshua HaMashiach. He has his Ahava, Yah's Ahava, he has taken his time even this day to instruct us to turn us back into the right path that we shall continue. Hallelujah. Turn me to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. We should have a beautiful countenance, Israel. Dawid, his countenance was beautiful, yet ruddy, but yet beautiful. Many say that Yahweh, he does not look on the exterior. Well, he does look on the exterior because he knows the interior. He knows what's in your heart. No, he does not judge as man judges. But yet a man that is full of the Ruach of Yahweh, he would judge as Yahweh would judge. So we're not wrong when we see this fallen countenance, this disdain and the labem in, in the face of Yisrael. Yahweh, he's not shooting in the dark, Yisrael. His target is to hit you. It is to hit me. So none of us escape this day. I don't want to escape. Hallelujah. I want to be in the line of fire of his Torah. So instruct me. Show me, almighty Yahweh that I may walk in this path, that I may be worthy to carry the stake. Hallelujah, Yahweh. 1 Samuel chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. It is concerning even the Nabi. And Yahweh said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that he has transgressed the order of Almighty Yah. See, I have rejected him for even reigning over Yisrael. He says, fill your anointing or your horn with the anointing oil and go. And I will send you to Yisha, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. Don't you know that we are king and not be before Almighty Yahweh? We should be one that proclaim his Torah and his mitzvah unto Be'er Yisra'ya, Kol Yisra'ya. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, if Saul hears it, he will kill me. And Yahweh said, take a heifer with you and say, I am come to offer a zabak, a sacrifice unto Almighty Yahweh. And call Yesha to the offering or to the zabak. And I will make known to you what you shall do. And I shall anoint to me, he says, him whom I name unto you. We have been named to Almighty Yahweh. To be anointed, Israel. Not after our flesh or anything that we have to offer unto Almighty Yahweh, but simply because He has chosen us. He has elected us to be anointed. 
But there's an attribute that Almighty Yahweh, that he does look upon. And that is the Pawnee. Yes. That is the face. Why? Because it shows that which is in the left of Yisrael. We must remember that. We must understand that any time, Yisrael. And Samuel did that which Yahweh spoke and came unto Bethlehem. And the elders of the town, they trembled at his coming and said, Come you and Shalom. They knew who this man was. Let's not be up on my And they said, Shalom. I am come to offer a Zabak unto Almighty Yahweh. He says to purify yourselves. Make yourselves ready. And come with me to the offer or to the Zabak. And offer Yishai and his sons. With Yishai and his sons. And he called them to the Zabak or to the sacrifice or to the offering. And it came to pass. When they were come that he looked upon Elab, and said, surely Yahweh, Messiah, is before him. But Yahweh said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance. Why? Because these were sons of strength. Each of them had their own way of expression. Maybe one had a strong facial expression, and some would say a nice jaw. Some say that the handsomeness of a man somewhat has to do with his jaw. Does he have a strong jaw? Maybe one had nice arms or triceps or biceps. Maybe one had the strength of the legs. But Yahweh said, no, nah, don't look at that. Don't look at that. I look what's in the left. I look at what's in the heart. He said, look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature. Not because they are tall. And they stand high above you. That's all right. He said, because I have refused him, I don't want him. For Yahweh sees not as Adam sees. For the sons of Adam looks on the outward appearance. But Yahweh, he looks upon the left. Yeah. He looks upon the heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We as being men, as being ox, Zakain, we need to look upon the left. We must look upon the heart. What is the heart you're talking about? Ourselves. We must judge what's in us. We must have ourselves. We must be prepared. We must be ready. And in that we'll find the right countenance that we may prepare the house in the Bible of Yisrael to be received upon Almighty Yah. But Zakir Yerami, you said that Yahweh, he does not see as man sees. That's why we need to see as Yahweh sees Yisrael. That's why there's not be he could not see after his liking or after the flesh. These handsome men, no. He had to be led by the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 8. And when Yishai called Abinabib and, and made him pass before Samuel, he said, neither is Yahweh chosen this. This attribute, this young man. He is fine. He is chiseled. But he's not chosen. He's not the chosen of Almighty Yahweh. Then you shall call Hashemunah to pass by. And he said, neither has Yahweh chosen this. Verse 10. Again, Yeshai made seven of his sons to pass forth before the prophet. Then I'll be Samuel. And Samuel said, Yeshai, Yahweh has not chosen these. These are not the ones. These are not the men. We know that these ones are the strength of your, of your body and of your flesh. They access your strength, Yeshai, but these are not the ones that Yahweh have chosen. And look what it says in verse 11, Yisrael. It's not by our own power. It's not by our own strength. Each one of these sons, these seven sons, represents the flesh or the arm or the strength of man. But it's not what Yahweh was looking for. It's not what he was wanting, Israel. He was looking for something that was much, much more expressionable. Yeah. Something that he saw that represented him, Israel. Yeah. When he looks upon us, Israel, our countenance, our expressions, he wants to see himself in us, Israel. When we look upon Yahshua HaMashiach and the beauty of Torah, we should see ourselves, Israel. So again, Yeshai 
made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Yeshai, Yahweh has not chosen these. Verse 11. And Samuel said to Yeshai, Are here all of your children, all of your sons? You see which one Yeshai chosen? He chose all these. He knew that he had another son that was out in the field. And he said, There remains yet the youngest. And behold, he is, he shepherds the sheep. And Samuel said unto Yeshai, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he comes hither. He comes here. He said, He will not give up. I will not give up the search, what Yahweh has sent me here to do. You must understand what I went through. I had to call an call a, a offering, a zabak, that I may come here and see your son. So he wasn't going to give up. And he says here in verse 12, and he sent and brought to him, and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. Say that he was ruddy. Yes. Out with the sheep, tending to the herds. His strength was not massed as the strength of his older brothers. But yet, it said, wherewithal, above all that, above all that, above all the strength and the brute that was there in that room, the other seven, he had chosen this one. He said, with all, it says, of the beautiful or the beauty of his countenance. It says that he was ruddy, but he was a beautiful countenance, Israel. This was not expressed in any of the other sons of Yeshai. And tough to look on. Are we tough to look on? Look to your neighbor. Go ahead, look, turn, look at your neighbor. Now turn and look at someone else. All right, turn and look at someone else. Are we one of the first we want to look at? The first one we want to look at is our Isha, our, 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 our wives and our husbands. But what about your Ahot and your Ah? Yeah. Do we see the beauty of Yah? Yeah. We should see the beauty of Yah. Yeah. We should see the, see the tub of Yah. Yeah. We should see the, the expression of Yah upon our upon name, upon our faces tonight, Yisrael, Yah. This day, Yisrael, Yah. It says that he was ruddy, and wherewithal he was of a beautiful countenance and tub to look upon. And Yahweh said, Arise and anoint him. This is the one. This is what I want. He expresses me. Yeah. I have found a man that shall walk according to what I have commanded. Yeah. He said, for this is he, this is the one. And Samuel, he took the horn of the oil, and he anointed him in the midst of his brethren. We have been anointed. Don't you know you have been anointed in the midst of your brethren? Yeah. Yeah. I have come out of a house, quite a few brothers and a few sisters. I have been anointed, Yisrael, out of my house. So have you, out of your kindred, amongst your brothers, from amongst your sisters, your cousins. You have been anointed of Almighty Yahweh. We are the chosen of Almighty Yahweh. So we must continue in his Torah, Yisrael. And he anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And it says, and the Ruach of Yahweh came upon Dawit. And from that day forward, Hallelujah. As the rock of Yahweh has it rested upon us this day, Israel. His rock has rested upon his house. It has rested upon his, his, his bayat, Yisrael. We should be assured of the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because he has written his name in the house of Yisrael, the bayat, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I bless Yahweh that I, we have been anointed. We are anointed, Yisrael. So we must walk in the understanding, and in the wisdom, Yisrael, that we have been chosen of Almighty Yahweh. Our presence, our countenance should be one of beauty, one of one understanding. It doesn't mean that we just sit there foolishly with a grin and a smile on our face. That's not the beauty of Yah. But it's, it's a look of assurance and contentment. Judgment. And understanding what Yahweh is doing. Not being foolish and unwise, but walking in the Torah and walking after the Ruach HaKodesh, Israel. That's what we need. That's what I desire. That's what we should want 
in the presence of our Almighty God. And it says, so Samuel, he rose up and went unto Ramah. He went his way. His task was complete. Hallelujah. Yahweh, his, not, his task is not complete. And he doesn't leave anything undone that he starts just right now. So he's not finished with us yet. And I brought Yahweh for that. And Samuel, after looking at those seven, would have went on. Then the will of Yahweh would have not been made complete, Israel. So Yahweh, he allowed Yahshua HaMashiach even to go through what he went through upon the stake and completed that. He did not leave us. He did not go without Yisrael. But he made sure that the task that he was sent to do was complete and that it was accomplished. Even to the point where, even as he gave up his life, he laid there in the tomb, that by the quickening of Almighty Yahweh, he was raised again. Hallelujah. And the power of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We must be raised up, Yisrael. We must have this same Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh. And if his Ruach dwells in us as it should, then we will see it upon our expressions. We will see it in our actions. We will see it in our everyday walk, in our work, and in our labor. And we'll express the expression of the Pawnee, the countenance of Almighty Yahweh. I desire that countenance is right, y'all. We must have that countenance. Hallelujah. Moving on. Moving on to Tehillim, that we had quite a bit to say and to write and to sing, to give Tehillim unto Almighty Yahweh concerning the countenance. Hallelujah. I want to begin here in Tehillim chapter 4, verse 1. It says here, a psalm of David, answered me, O Yahweh, answer me, O Yahweh, when I call. O Yahweh of my righteousness. Don't you know Yahweh hears our righteousness? We have no righteousness in our own selves, Israel. Yah. Yahweh hears our righteousness. He said, you have enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer, hear my cry, hear my plea, Almighty Yahweh, because you are all that I have. O you sons of men, how long will you turn my splendor and honor into shame and dishonor? Do we not turn the splendor? Have we not changed the splendor or the honor of Almighty Yahweh and bring him shame? And have brought him shame, Yisrael? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? He says, but know that Yahweh has set apart him that is Sadiq for himself. Yahweh has set apart that which is Sadiq for himself. That is his portion. It is his reward. We are his portion, Yisrael. We are his reward. He has set aside that which is Sadiq, him that is Sadiq for himself. Yahweh, we're here when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Continue with your own love upon your bed and be still, Salah. He says, offer so the sabbat or the sacrifice is the offering of righteousness and put your trust in Almighty Yahweh. That's all we have to do, Yisrael. And we should be established. Our foundation in Yahshua HaMashiach rooted and grounded. Verse 6. There be many that say, who shall show us any tough? Who shall show us any mercy, any ahava? He said, Yahweh, lift up the light of your pony. Lift up the light of your countenance, Almighty Yahweh, upon us. I pray that, Yisrael, that should be our prayer. That Yahweh lift up your, the light of your countenance. The high of your countenance, the life, the help upon Yisrael. Hallelujah. As the brightness and the beauty of the sun. 
You have put gladness in our left. Have y'all put gladness in your left today, Israel? I have the eshad of the gladness of Almighty Yahweh. He said, you have put gladness in my left. More than in the time that the corn and their wine were increased. I will both lay me down in shalom. I will lay down in comfort. I will close my eyes. I will not worry about my enemies that pursue me. I will not worry about the arrow that fly by, by day. Nor the judgment that comes in the new day. He said, I am content. I understand. He said, I will both lay me down in shalom and I will sleep. Beautiful sleep. We have nothing to worry about, Israel. We should be able to lay down no matter what we experience, understanding that Yahweh here is our help, Yahweh is our strength. That we're able to lay down as being his beloved, his chosen, his elect, and have beautiful sleep, have rest with confidence that everything is all right, that everything is in Yahweh's hands. We should give it all up to Yahweh. Hallelujah. And sleep for you, Almighty Yahweh, only make me dwell safely. In the pony, in the brightness of his countenance, the shining of his countenance, we are able to dwell safely. And in assurance and reassurance, Yisrael, that he is in control of all things. Moving on to Helium chapter 21, verse 1 again. It's talking about Yahweh's countenance. We don't want his countenance to change upon us. That he is displeased. And that he allow his, his aft or his hot displeasure, his judgment to fall upon us. Why? Because we have walked in sin and not according to his word, Yisrael. Dawi says here again in Tehillim, The king shall rejoice in your strength, O Yahweh. Do we rejoice in the strength of Yah? Are we not kings? Are we not those that carry out the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? The king shall rejoice in your strength, O Yahweh, and in your Yahshua. How greatly shall he rejoice in the deliverance of Almighty Yahweh, in his Yahshua, in his Yahshua. He said, you have given him his heart's desire. What are the heart's desire? Because you know, Yahweh, he gives us our heart's desire. If we continually walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, we will not desire anything wicked, anything lustful, anything wrong, because our desire is his desire, Yisrael. He said, you have given him his heart's desire, and he has not withholding the request or a request from his lips, Shalai. For you go before him with blessings, with Berechiah and Tuff, you set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asks of you, and you give it unto him, the length of days forever and ever. And his splendor is great in your Yeshai, your salvation, your deliverance. Grander and majesty have you laid upon him, for you have made him most blessed forevermore. You have made him exceedingly glad with your countenance. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Made exceedingly glad oh, yeah. in his countenance, in his presence, Yisrael. Verse 7. For the king trusts in Yahweh. Should we trust in Yahweh? And through the steadfast Ahava, his loving kindness, of the Most High, he shall not be moved. We shall not be moved as being kings. We shall not be moved, Israel. Once we understand where our health and our wealth come from, as we look up towards the hills, and the countenance of Yahweh shines upon us, Israel, we shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. Not by our emotions. Not by the ways of the world, which direction they're heading in. 
We shall not be moved, but we shall stand on the sure rock, Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, your hand shall find out all of your enemies. Your right hand shall find out those that hate you. You shall make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. Yahweh shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruits, their fruits shall you destroy from the earth. This is concerning our enemies, Israel. Yah. We should stand strong before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because he has everything under control. And he says, and that zero shall be consumed from among the children of man. For they, for they intended evil against you. They intend evil against us, Yisrael. Don't let the world fool you. Whether it be your family or your friends. What's that, King Rami? You're teaching that we should be against our family and our friends. Yahshua HaMashiach taught it. Those that do not walk after the Torah of the Mishvah. It says it right here. They are against you. They're against us, Yisrael. That's what the Torah says. Yahshua said, who is my ark and my hope? Who is my ima? Those that walk after the will, that walk after the Torah of my avah, those are who our family are, Yisrael. That's what, he, that's what he says, Yisrael. For they intend to do evil against you. They imagine a mischief, a mischief, a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Therefore, shall you make them to turn their back when you shall make ready your arrows upon your strings against the face of them, against their pawnee, against their countenance. For they have a fierce countenance. It is against us, Yisrael. He says, be you exalted, Almighty Yahweh, in your strength. So will we sing praises unto your power. We shall sing praises unto his name. Why? Because he has lifted us up, Yisrael. He has lifted up his countenance upon us, the brightness of his countenance, that we may find safety and reassurance in him, that we may lay down upon our beds and sleep with shalom. No worries. Well, if I pass away in my sleep, it is all tough. It is all well. If I do not wake up to see the sun in the morning, then it's all right. Why? Because I see the sun, Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Just a few verses, Yisrael. I have so much to this concerning the Pawnee as I continue in this message concerning the change, Yisrael. We must change before Mighty Yahweh. And it's a change that is visual. You know a man which his love has been changed, when he's not walking after the lust of his flesh, the pride of life. You see it. It is visible in his Pawnee. It is visible in his dress and what he's wearing. It's visible in his stride. It's visible in his work and even in his work ethics. It is changed and it is seen, Yisrael. Concerning the countenance of the wicked, again in Tehillim Psalms, moving back to chapter 10, verse 1, as I bring this to a close, Yisrael, and I shall continue. Hallelujah. I don't want us to be weary in well-doing, Yisrael. For Yahweh, he knows what we have need of today. He knows what we have need of on tomorrow. And that is more and more of him. More and more of his countenance. More and more of his Torah and his Mishpah. More of Yahshua HaMashiach. Fill our cup, Yah. Hallelujah. To Helium chapter 10, verse 1. I'm going to read this, this in uh, chapter 10. I'm going to skip a few and get to the ending of this message today. It says here, Why stand afar off, O Yahweh? Why hide you yourself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride does pursue the poor, persecute the poor. Let them be taken in their devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasts, of his soul desire. Is that not what the wicked do? Is that not what we do? Walking in the wickedness of our own pride. Do we not boast? 
Is that not what King Nebuchadnezzar did? Did not he boast? For the wicked boasts of his soul desire and the blessings of the covetous, whom Yahweh abhors. Yahweh hates that. He hates that, Yisrael. For the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek Yahweh. Did you hear that? Yes. It says, for the wicked in the pride of his countenance will not seek Yahweh. If we walk in the pride of wickedness in this countenance, Yisrael, Yah, we're not, we won't seek Yah. We won't desire the things of Almighty Yahweh. It says the wicked in his countenance will not seek Yah. And is not in all his thoughts. Yahweh is not in the thoughts of a wicked man. He is not in the thoughts of those that transgress his Torah, that boast Yisrael. It says that his ways are ways of grievousness. But your judgments are far above and out of his sight. Do you hear that? Yeah. Even the judgments of the Torah, of the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, they're far out of the sight. They're not even in the thoughts of a wicked man. Yeah, For all of his enemies, he puffs at them. He shows his chest. He shows his strength before his enemy where he has no strength. Our strength is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. It says that, his, that he, he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. That's what the wicked says, Yisrael. Yeah, yeah. Never be in adversity. I, not, I should never see hard times. Yeah, yeah. In verse 7 it says, His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud, and under his tongue, is mischief and iniquity. That's what it says about a wicked man in his countenance, Yisrael. Let us not walk after this spirit, after the boasting and the pride of a wicked man, Yisrael. But let us walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. If anything, knowing where we stand, knowing who we are in Yahshua HaMashiach, and walking in a tough countenance, a tough heart, that our thoughts are tough yes, yes. in his presence, that our actions are pure in his sight. Everything that we do, Yisraeli, that it be acceptable. Let me end this here, Yisraeli. For all you that are listening by the via of live stream, we pray that Shabbat has been inspiration to your love. To guard our countenance, to not walk after the ways of the world, to not dress ourselves, putting on makeup, Yisrael, yeah, that's not your beauty. It does not accentuate the Torah of Almighty Yahweh to the world. It's of the world, and it's extinct among the world, Yisrael. Yeah. So take off the makeup, the lipsticks. And allow the countenance of Almighty Yahweh to shine out of you, out of your face. Allow his Torah to burn, to cleanse the dross, the things that are within us, Yisrael, that we may present our bodies as an offering that is acceptable in his sight. Numbers chapter 6, in my closing, I'm going to read 22, verse 22 to verse 26, verse 27. It says, Yahweh, he spoke unto Moshe, which was Yahweh's man at that time, the leader, saying, speak unto Aharon and to his son, saying, on this wise you shall bless the children of Yisrael, this saying, this prayer, saying unto them, may Yahweh bless you. May he barak you. May he continuously bless us, Yisrael, as we walk in the Torah in obedience unto what he has commanded us. And Yahweh make his ponim, his face to shine upon you and show favor upon you. Don't you want the favor, the favor 
of Almighty Yahweh. I want his favor. I want his face to shine upon me. And may Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Nothing like the shalom of Yah. As he lift up his countenance upon the house of Yisrael Yah. Don't you know when he lift up his countenance? It's because there is something that he sees, that he enjoys, that he delights in. There's nothing more beautiful than looking into the face of a, a, a hope and having the beauty of Yahshua HaMashiach to emanate from their faces and from their hearts and from their lives. It says here in verse 27, And they shall put my name upon the children of Yisrael. Yahweh has placed his name upon our lives here, Yisrael. And I, he says, I, Almighty Yahweh, I will barak, I will bless you. I will bless them. Hallelujah. I want Yahweh to bless us. And he has blessed us. His face has shined upon Kol Yisrael on this beautiful Shabbat day. Hallelujah. So let's allow our Panim to shine before him. Let our faces shine upon our ark, upon our hope. We should see Yahshua, we should see the judgment, we should see the power of Yahweh, the beauty of Yahweh in our pardon, in our faces. Hallelujah. 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 Again, we do Barak, Yah, for a beautiful day, another beautiful Shabbat. He has given us, he has fed us his meat today, his water, his refreshing upon the house of Yisrael, Yah, to just cont to continue to walk in his Mishra, in his ways, not our ways. Because our ways bring death. But walking in the light of Yahshua HaMashiach, it always brings life, Israel. Yeah. But it's a state that we must carry, Zakhen Yeramiah. But yet it should be a pleasure for us to carry even the stake. It was a pleasure for him. He endured for us. So should we not endure for him? I don't believe at any time, even upon that state, that Yahshua HaMashiach, that his countenance presented a wickedness and a distaste and a displeasure. I don't buy it. Even until, even until the very last hour, the expression and the hava upon his countenance was one that pleased Almighty Yahweh. Even though he looked down and his body was torn, yet his face revealed the essence and the hava and the power of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Again, we do Barak, Kol Yisrael, those that are listening by via of live stream. Those of you that are listening by the broadcast, the FM station that we have here at Teshua Community. Yahweh Barak, y'all, let us shoot, let us turn. Hallelujah to Yerushalayim. Abba Yahweh, we do told you for this day, for this teaching, for this time, Yahweh, just to enter into your bayat. There are conditions throughout the world that do not have a place as we have, Israel, Almighty Yahweh, that we can all gather. But yet we all gather in the Muna, we gather in the Ruach, and in the beauty of your countenance on this day, Abba Yahweh. So as we pray, Abba Yahweh, as we seek your face this day, your countenance, we do ask that you would touch Kol Yisrael Yah. We pray for Yisrael Yah that is scattered throughout the world, that you continue to strengthen us and enlighten us and teach us, Abba Yahweh, and show us your way. Your paths, Abba Yahweh, as thou we pray, that we may walk therein. And all things we do, Toda you, we give you Toda in Yahshua's name. We do ask you to take those that have come from near and afar home safely, Barak those that are listening by via of our stream. And that, as we lay upon our beds tonight, Abba Yahweh, that your counsels will shine upon us. And that we may, that we may know and understand that everything it is in your hands, Abba Yahweh, so we commit our nephesh, our soul, our trust, and our hope in you above all things. And we give you toda. And we barak you this day. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do declare. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahbarak Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.